Cohn's embedding conjecture has always been a very significant conjecture in the field of quantum mechanics. Now, is this completely correct? Um, are there certain follies in this conjecture? We'll discuss in this video. Well, the Cohn's embedding conjecture was conjectured by the French mathematician Alain Cohn's in the 1970s. Well, before coming to the overview, Let's take a very simple example. Um, consider a tossed up ball. We can predict its position by considering the x, y and the z coordinates and we can simply plug them into some equations which can help us to model its trajectory. Well, it's a very trivial stuff. Now let's consider a beam of light. Considering its particle nature, it is composed of photons. And in order to predict the, or, or rather describe this quantum mechanical system, physicists and mathematicians plug square arrays of numbers or the matrices into some equations. Now, let's talk about the total number of rows and the columns required in these square matrices. Since it is a square matrix, uh, we can ob obviously say that the total number of columns are the same as the total number of rows. But how many of them do we require? If we consider a single photon, we will require a 2 by 2 matrix. For two photons, uh, a 4 by 4 matrix, and for three, we will require a 8 by 8 matrix. Well, the numbers in the matrix represent the angle of vibration which corresponds to the direction of the travel. Now, obviously, a beam of light does not contain one to three photons, but there are so many of them. There are so many of them and literally we require a matrix with infinitely many rows and columns to describe the beam as we can see that the number of rows and columns increase with the powers of 2 with the addition of a single proton. These characteristics were studied by John von Neumann in the 1930s. Now about four decades later Cohn's gave a theory. To understand it, let's take an example. Consider a world map and we need to predict the temperature of every point on it. Um, well, it's not that easy. There are so many points, but one strategy that we can apply is to divide the map into section by the drawing some grids. Now it's quite simple to measure the temperature of the different blocks which can give us an idea about every point present on this block. Obviously there will be some errors, but as we increase the number of blocks, the more accurate we get. So we can say the more number of grids, the lesser is the error. Well, this is the overview of the conjecture. So what are we doing over here? We are just predicting the nature of higher dimensional matrices from lower dimensional matrices. Now let's come back to the beam of light. If we apply the same concept over here, uh, we can say that by predicting the nature of finite number of photons, we can estimate or the approximate the nature of the beam. Well, a recent development in computer science has proven that this is not true for every infinite dimensional matrices describing the quantum mechanical system. Well, this is perplexing for mathematicians as there might be a family of infinite dimensional matrices which are still unknown to them as Cohn's had already stated that uh, this conjecture was true for every infinite dimensional matrices but now we know that it is false. Another interesting fact is that there are still many conjectures which are, which are tied up with this embedding conjecture. It means that if the embedding conjecture um, had been true the others would also have been true. Now since it is proven false, we are now quite sure that other conjectures are also false. Now the, this might mean that mathematicians must get back to work on these problems. And it is obviously much more perplexing for them as stated by Vern Paulsen.